Hi, in this video I want to follow up and do a little bit more work on my basic web form in a web page using Dreamweaver. So far I've simply got a headline 2 and I've got three text boxes with labels and a submit button, input type submit button for my form. Let me go and see how this is looking on the browser so far. Let me go ahead and save this, jump over to my browser and here we go. Looks pretty much like it does in design view. So I've got this basic form and a submit button. But there's really no action tied to this form yet. And that'll be coming soon enough. But first I want to work on some more elements that I can put into this form. I'm already asking for an individual's name first and last and their email address, but I'd also like them to be able to type in more information. So after my request for their email address, I'm going to use a text area box. So on my forms tab, on my input, on my uh, insert panel, I'm going to go to the text area button, click this, and I'm going to put in some attributes for it. For ID, I'll go ahead and call this comment. All my IDs are going to have are not going to have any spaces. The label, I'll just type in comment with a semicolon. That's what people see. Attach label using the for attribute, position before the item, and click OK. There we go. So now we've got a comment box. And after my comment box, I want to put in something else where the user could choose from a series of options. And for that, I'll use a select menu. They call it here a list menu in Dreamweaver. So I have my insertion point is down here below my comment box. And I'm going to go to the select to the list menu option and look at the attributes for this one. And let's see, I'm asking for their name, their email address, a place to put a comment. And I'll go ahead and ask them uh, how did they hear about us. So. How did you hear as my ID, the label? How did you hear about it? Hear about us? The question. Attach label using the for attribute and before form item, and I'm going to click OK. Now, when you do a select menu, as I've just done, you're not done with it yet. There's always going to be options associated with a select menu. So if I click on this item, I can start to work with it. I can go down to my properties panel and I can go to the list values option. The list values will allow me to put in all the various items. So for each item I have to put in a label, which is what a person's going to see on the drop down menu of choices, and a value. A value is the piece of data that would actually be sent to a script on the server. So an item label needs to be written in a human friendly way and the value needs to be written in a program friendly way or a computer friendly way. So let's see, I've got uh, how did you hear about us? So I can go ahead and put in online ad and the value for that can be online ad. I'm not using any spaces there. And another item or another way that they may have heard about us is newspaper, newspaper from a friend value friend and we could go on and on but basically you have a label which is what the person sees and a value which is what's actually sent to the server. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and by default the first one is at the top there or I'm sorry the first the top most option is displayed. Let me go into a file save and let's look at this in the browser now. There we go so there's my form I've got some text boxes I've got a comment area text area box and I've got a selection menu now of several items person can then choose that fill this out choose appropriate item and hit submit now when a person submits a form it's gonna be sent to the server so let's look and see how that's done on Dreamweaver Basically, you just need to make sure that you can get to your form properties, and that's easy enough to do. Simply click on the border of your form element. Okay, that's that red dotted border there. So basically, this is my form, and my properties panel now is associated with my form itself. It's defaulted to method equals post, which is fine. My form already has an ID called contact1. I named it earlier. Um, this is the most critical part here though, the action. Currently my form has no action. When somebody submits a form, the data is going to be submitted to whatever the action indicates. So you're often going to see a web address or a subfolder on here which contains a script. 
Now, we haven't got into making PHP scripts for this yet, and we'll do that at a later time, but even if you don't know PHP, then you can easily use a free service so your forms get submitted to a server, which then automatically kick it on to your email address. It's an easy way that you can have people fill out a form on your website, and it goes to your email. So I'm going to pause for a moment and go find one of those. So I'm going to use a service called Responsomatic, which I've used in classes before, and this service has been around for a long time. And uh, I've already got an account here, so otherwise you would choose Get Started. Let me go ahead and log in. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and create a form. For form name, I'll simply call this Contact1. It's not essential that you really name it. If you've already got a form, you don't have to do it this way, but I'm just going to make it for convenience. Contact1, and I'll choose Create Form. Okay, now they've given me some default uh, fields, text box fields for name and email address. Honestly, don't care because I'm making my own form on Dreamweaver. So I'm just going to go ahead and save and continue to step two. Really, what we need, and this is going to be coming up pretty soon, is going to be this getting the HTML part. Okay, form options. Um, got a few different choices here. There's basic and professional services at Responsomatic but I'm not going to do anything terribly fancy. I do think in real life having a confirmation page or a thank you for submission page is, is super professional, but before getting involved with all that, you might as well get some basic PHP. A PHP form to mail is pretty easy to do, and we'll check that out at a later time. But for this free service, it's not so bad. Um, let's see, receive a copy of each form submission by email. That's recommended. I'm going to go ahead and save and continue to step three, even though I haven't chosen any options here. Okay, here's really what I wanted to show you. Um, there's some HTML on here, which is absolutely critical for your form to function. Now, they've given us an entire form element here. They've got form IDs, which is, which is really important. They've got your account ID and things like that. So you do need to have all of that. But then they've got a table where they've designed the form. So most of this stuff is not essential. Okay. So I just want to show you what you need in order to get this form to work. You're going to need the opening form tag. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this. I'm going to copy that opening form tag, jump back over to Dreamweaver. I'll go to my code view. And I'm going to replace my form tag with their form tag. There we go. So now I've got their form tag, which is going to go to their PHP script. So they're using PHP to process this form data. Let me go back to the code they provide. I don't need that div tag, but I do need these hidden inputs. So they've got one, two, Three. They've got three hidden inputs. I'm going to go ahead and copy that, jump back over to Dreamweaver. I'm going to paste these three hidden inputs. It doesn't really matter where they are as long as they're between the opening and closing form tags. So I can paste them right in there. Okay, just this looks a little bit cleaner. So I've got their opening form tag and I've got their three hidden inputs. Now I noticed that one of their hidden inputs is for required variables and you could actually tweak this a bit too. They want to know which fields are required. I'm going to go ahead and tell it that I don't have a name field. By the way, name is looking for the name attribute in the various field elements. So the ones that I've got, I've got first name, comma, last name, comma, and I did use email, I believe. Correct. So I'm going to say that my first name, last name, and email fields fields are required. All right, and those are the only changes I'm going to make. So I'll just simply go back to design view, and there's really no change here except for the fact that we have a notification that there are some hidden inputs. So basically, once you've got that necessary HTML in there, you can simply you can do a file save hit over your browser and test it out. So uh, since I did say that my first name and last name and email address are required fields, if I tried to submit this without a last name, it's going to let me know that, hey, wait a minute, last name isn't filled out. I have to go back to the form, fill that out, and I can put anything I want in there and hit submit. Now, because I'm using a free service, it's going to do this little delayed action here while it gives me a survey. When that stops, I can hit continue, and then I get my thank you page. So with a free service, that's, that's the price you pay. However, it is pretty easy to use a PHP script of your own 